You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator, and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional, and that's why we call it Season 5, and all those videos from 2020 they are all loaded in my youtube channel my handle on youtube is temi agedo temi agedo which is right on the screen i encourage you to visit my channel not only to view those old open heavens videos which are a great study guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i know that will bless you exceedingly and while you're on my youtube channel this is very important don't forget to subscribe to like comment and share and god bless you as you do now pastor adeboye led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria in west africa and daddy um gives you a few scriptures from the bible and a memory verse and that helps you to understand the body of the text praise god so Today is Wednesday, June the 12th, Wednesday, June the 12th. And the title of today's daily devotional is The Helmet of Salvation. The Helmet of Salvation, praise God. So now, um, over the last few days, since last week's Saturday, Daddy has been taking us through a series. I titled it the, uh, the Whole Armor of God or The Full Armor of God. And what Daddy is doing is that he's taking each of those elements and explaining it to us. So we started with the belt of truth. Then we talked about the breastplate of righteousness. Then we were shutting our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And yesterday we took up the shield of faith. And today we're going to be looking at the helmet of salvation. So it's, it would, it's wise that we go back and watch those videos so we can gain the knowledge that the Spirit of God is sharing with us, you know, via devo the devotional. Praise God. So today, being Wednesday, June the 12th, the title is The Helmet of Salvation. Our scriptural reading is taken from the book of First Thessalonians 5, 1 to 10. But I really um, will not be able to teach you effectively if I don't take you to the base scripture, which is Ephesians 6 from verse 13, okay, to 17. Now I'm going to read it from the King James Version. This is, you know, I have to so I can explain properly. And it says, uh, Paul says that, um, wherefore take unto you the whole armor, no, no, verse, yes, verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. So that's verses 13 to 17. Now, as I, be, I, I, I then explained that, you see, Paul was using, because, you know, they were, um, they were being colonized by the Romans. And so when he used a soldier to explain this armor, this um, armor of God, they could understand. But that we must not let the elements of the armor distract us from the core things that the Spirit of God is, you know, uh, communicating to us. So from verse 14, I can say, having, your, having truth, having righteousness, having the gospel of peace, take faith, take the help, this, take salvation, and the word of god do you understand so those are the focus the focus is truth righteousness the gospel of peace faith salvation and the word of god okay so you see the focus so it must not major on the minor those that i mentioned are the main things praise god so let's we're going to, don't be talking about the helmet of salvation today let's now go into first thessalonians chapter 5 we're going to be reading from verses 1 to 10 the helmet of salvation and i'm going to be reading from the new king james version which doesn't have the wizard goes down and from west comes down what seekers down and the superfluity of naughtiness so it's just plain king james english which is much easier to understand now that goes the reading of god's word first thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 to 10 but concerning the times and season brethren you have no need that i should write to you for you yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the lord so comes as a thief in the night for when they say peace and safety then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains 
upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape but you brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief you are all sons of light and sons of the day we are not of the night nor of the darkness therefore let us not sleep as others do but let us watch and be sober for those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk get drunk are drunk at night but let those who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet the hope of salvation for god did not appoint us to wrath but to obtain salvation through our lord jesus christ who died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should live with him we should live together with him oh wow 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 praise god i i when i was sharing on the breastplate of righteousness i didn't have time to talk about the um that in in first thessalonians um god had um spoken about the breastplate of faith and love you know so praise god so but here you know paul is just saying to us christians that you know we should we are children of the day we are children of the light we should not leave the the rapture should not take us suddenly you know um he said those that get drunk they get drunk at night we should be sober paul peter said we should be sober and vigilant okay so we, we should prepare we should know that our master jesus christ is coming back we should live every day as christians so we are not appointed to wrath, but to salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so whether we are sleeping, whether we are awake, we are Christ, we are born, we are, we are ready at any time that the rapture comes or that the Lord returns. You know. So He's warning us that you know we we He said for those when they say peace and safety, they think they think that oh now you know, and this is this is actually talking about Israel. You know, um, the Bible says God had given them a strong delusion to believe a lie. And that's the lie of the Antichrist. And when they say peace and safety, when they say peace and safety, we know that that's not peace and safety. When they make that agreement with the Antichrist, when they sign that agreement for three and a half years of peace and, you know, for seven years of peace, we they, they say peace and safety. But we know it's not peace and safety. The Bible says that sudden destruction comes upon them. Why? They were deceived. They received a strong delusion to believe a lie. Okay? So when they say oh they're bringing this this is what they will give uh, to drive away the sickness to drive away the plague we know that is not true that is a, a a a strategy of satan that's what paul is, what paul is saying that suddenly as labor pangs comes up in a pregnant woman that's how destruction will come but that's not our portion in jesus name because we are children of light whether we sleep whether we are awake we are children of god okay we are born again and that's why we must live our lives as children of god praise the lord so the helmet of salvation now this the memory verse is also taken from ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 and it says and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god remember what, what i said take salvation the word of god praise the lord now today i'll be continuing my teaching on the full armor of god by discussing the helmet of salvation that's that this talking now. A helmet is a piece of armor that covers the head. Your head is a part of the body that can be used to identify you as evidenced by the snapshots used in identification cards. Wearing the helmet of salvation identifies you as a child of God and tells the devil to take his hands off you. Praise God. So, you know, we're talking about the breastplate, how the breastplate covers the most important parts of the, um, of the body, which is the heart okay it covers the heart so the the helmet is it also covers the head the way the brain is okay where the mind is okay so that is saying that you know the headshot like when you want to take a passport photograph what the, the the they can only identify a person by his head by his face you know by his head and so that when we wear the helmet of salvation when we wear the helmet of salvation that identifies us as children of god because we have salvation we have the helmet of salvation and that has, that helmet of salvation also protects our mind praise the lord praise god it's unfortunate however that many believers remove their helmet of salvation when they get to certain circles they don't want people to know there to know that they are saved they try to conform to the world rather than being different and romans 12 2 says that we should not be conformed to this world but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So some people, that is saying that some people, when they get into certain circles, they take off their helmet of salvation. 
The Bible says that we are not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ because the power of God unto salvation. We're not ashamed. I'm a Christian everywhere I go. When I sleep, when I wake, I'm born again. I'm not ashamed of my Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said that if you are ashamed of me on this earth, I'll be, if you deny me on this earth, I will deny you in, front, in the presence of my, uh, my heavenly father and in the presence of the holy angels. You know, so we, Jesus Christ is our identity. Christ is who we are. And anyone who does not love, says they love me, they don't love my Jesus, can't love me. Praise God. Do you understand what I mean? Praise God. So don't, don't be conformed to this world. If they, they, they say you cannot come in because you are a Christian or whatever, perfect. That means I'm not meant to be there. Praise God. When a Christian refuses to identify, and I, I, I remember a man of God, um, he was, he, he, I, I, it's, yes, so he, he was in a church in South Africa, and he said he realized that when the camera was, um, you know, like when they were in church, and the camera was filming, and some people were covering their faces, like, oh, I don't want people to see me. Can you imagine that? They, they were hiding their faces from the camera. Why? No, why? They were ashamed. They didn't want to be seen in the camera in church. No, no, no. <laughs> no. No. When a Christian refuses to identify as a child of God, that Christian is removing the protection from his or her head. And that is one delicate part of the body that will result in instant dead, death if it is struck. Many people lose their salvation because they are trying to conform to the world. Keep your salvation intact by boldly identifying as a child of God everywhere you go. Yes, I'm a Christian. Oh, yes, I'm a Christian. I've been a Christian since 1997. I've put my hand to the plow. I'm not looking back. Just Christ is Lord, you know. So we must not conform to this world. Anyone who will not accept you because of your self, because of your, because of your, because, because you have chosen Jesus Christ, then they don't need to be your friends. No, it doesn't matter what. The, God can give you much more. You know, God can give us much. God, our God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Who is, who, what man is that? Dust. No, so don't be conformed to this world. Don't join them. We have our own company. Okay, so if you are, and, and this is what Elijah was saying. Why hurt you between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. And if Baal be Baal, serve him. Why, why hurt you between two opinions? So if you're on God's side, be on God's side. And if you're, you want to go into the world, go, but don't stand. There's no demilitarized zone. There's no purgatory. You're either on God's side or on the devil's side. So if you're on the Lord's side, I, I, I raise my hand. I'm born again. I'm a Christian. I'm, do you understand? I choose Jesus. I've chosen him. <laughs> There's no turning back. Praise God. And that, that is the greatest decision that you and I can ever make, choosing the Lord. Choosing Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the greatest decision. So don't play around. Don't play around. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't, don't deny Jesus. Don't take off your helmet of salvation because you want to be able to be accepted by people in the world. Let not that man think he will receive anyone, anything. God doesn't like doubters. The blood of Jesus, which was shed on the cross, is what gives us the gift of salvation. Those that are saved are of the light and not of the darkness, as seen in today's Bible reading. Hence, we must behave as children of light at all times. Matthew 7, 16 says that you can identify those who are saved by their fruits. If you start exhibiting fruits that are not of God, your helmet is of salvation is off. And that spells trouble because on the last day when Jesus comes back to take his own to be with him, he will only take those who still have their helmets of salvation on. And this is why you must walk out your salvation with fear and trembling as per Philippians 2.12. Don't assume that you still have your helmet on just because you have been going to church or because you are a pastor. Check your salvation at all times to be sure that you are still standing. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says that you should take it if you think you are standing, lest you fall. Okay. So, you know, like, um, you're a Christian, but um, you, you still want to go to the nightclub. You still want to go and uh, party at the rave, you know. Um, you know your spirit is telling you you can't do that. Now that you are born again, you have to be separated unto God. But you still love that world. You say, oh, my Christian. Also on Sunday, you sit tie your scarf. I'm speaking in tongues. But during the week, oh, baby, you're just going around attending all those things, those functions I used to attend before with your old friends, you know. 
<laughs> you know, evil communication corrupts good morals. And so if they say, and they're like, ah, what are you doing here? Ah, born again, uh, you say, ah, no, born, born, again, born, born again doesn't reach jail. No, you know, we are the light of the world. What concord had light with darkness? Come out from amongst them and be separate, especially those of us who bear the vessels of the Lord. You know, if, if, come out, if you feel God is in a uh, friendship with the world, is enmity with God. You know, and if you don't take heed, they will drag you back into the world. It's just a matter of time. Mm? So don't don't join. If you are, if God be God, serve Him. If Baal be Baal, serve Him. Why haughty between two opinions? You think you can have the best of both worlds? No. If you are a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God, and that is saying that we should be. If you, in fact, by doing that, your helmet is already. It's just a matter of time. It's and if you're in the wrong place, wrong things will happen to you. You know, so maybe your helmet of salvation is off. And that is saying that helmet, salvation comes because of the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. You, are, you put on the helmet of salvation the day you get born again and it must remain on. Or we must put on the whole armor of God. We must put on the whole armor of God. That helmet of salvation is, our, is what covers our mind, covers our head, identifies us as Christians. You know, so um, when, they are, when the enemy is um, throwing attacks at your mind, you must have on your helmet of salvation. Okay, you must have your helmet. It protects our mind and shows our, it's our identity. It's what identifies us as Christians, you know. And that is it. Don't assume that you have. Don't don't assume that you still have your helmet of salvation on just because you have been going to church, or even because you are a pastor, or because you are in the choir. Check your salvation. The Bible says uh, that we should examine ourselves if we be in the faith, you know. Check at all times to make sure that you are still standing. First Corinthians 10, 12 says that we should take heed that we should take heed if you think you are standing, lest you fall. And this is why we appear before God in Zion every time. You know, we, we go to church, we appear before God in Zion so that God can service us. He will open us, you know, as in the presence of God. When in the gathering, when we come onto Zion, the city of the living God, we come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the word of God is being preached. You know, God is showing us who we are, you know, and he's servicing us and talking to us and telling us, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't go here anymore. Don't do this during our times of fellowship. We must keep our helmet of salvation. We must guard our salvation jealously. Amen. Key point is your helmet of salvation identifies you as a child of God. Make sure you have it on at all times. Okay. Going to church is not, we, we, as Christians, we must go to church. The Bible says that our Lord Jesus went to the synagogue as his custom was. But you see, you must be saved. You must be saved. You must be a Christian because there are some Christians who are going to miss the rapture. And that's not us. So make sure that, we have to make sure that our T's are properly crossed, as they, they say in the world, and our eyes properly dotted. We make sure that um, our oils, our lamp have oils, that we are always looking up to Jesus Christ. You know, we follow him wholeheartedly. We leave the world behind. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. Thank you for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you for the grace that brought salvation that appeared to us. We pray for all those who are not born again in our families, in our schools, in our, ch in our churches, in our um, um, neighbors who are not saved. I pray that the grace of God that brings salvation will appear to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we ask for grace to preach the gospel, to preach your word, to convince, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and teaching in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, help us, Almighty God. Help us to lay aside the sins that so easily beset us and help us to run with endurance this race that you have set before us. Help us that after we have preached to others, we will not be cast away in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to press towards the goal of the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for the baptism of your Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. And while you're on my YouTube channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Very, very important. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And even if you don't have a YouTube account, for my sake, please do subscribe to YouTube and then subscribe to my channel. Oh, it's not too much to ask. God bless you. And I give you permission to share this on your social media platforms. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. My name again is Sister Temitaya. And the Lord bless you. Have a beautiful day.